A very active pattern in the tropics continuing with at least three, maybe even more areas to watch for potential development over the next two weeks. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this Tuesday. It is now August 5th. And uh, right on schedule, starting to think about the peak of hurricane season, although still a month really away from that peak. Uh, But we're definitely on the uptrend, and the Atlantic got the memo. And you can see next to me uh, plenty of areas uh, lit up here uh, that we need to discuss. And there's going to be even more than what you see on this map. We've got at least two other areas I've got my eyes on. So that leaves a grand total of five different areas in the Atlantic to watch for either an ongoing storm or a potential new storm to form over the next two weeks. And unfortunately, that does include potential potential impacts to land. Uh, now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. And if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Also, consider following me on social media, uh, all linked down in the description below, or you could just search up Gerald Mingle on uh, any of your favorite social media platforms, and I'm sure I'll show up somewhere. So definitely uh, check me out there. Uh, now, with that said, let's just dive right on into things because a good a bit, a uh, good bit, excuse me, to discuss uh, today in uh, the video. So we'll start by just taking a broad look at the Atlantic here, and you can see those three areas. And we'll start with the current storm. This is Dexter out here, and I'll show it to you on satellite here in just a moment. A uh, 40 mile an hour tropical storm now getting into cold waters up into the North Atlantic. Not going to be a problem for anyone and will luckily pull off uh, into no man's land and be a good old fashioned fish storm. Now, the next area closest to home here is right off the Carolina coastline and now medium percent or likelihood that this will develop anywhere again in that orange area over the next seven days or so. And if this does develop, it would get the E name, which is Aaron. And that is the next name on the list that we're uh, getting ready to cross off. And if this one doesn't do it, well, uh, then there's a big old area out here in the main development region that is also running a medium chance uh, to potentially take that E name or maybe even the name after it if uh, the other system does it first. So you can definitely see things lighting up here. Now, outside of those areas, uh, there's even more I'm watching out here. You can see it on satellite imagery. Uh, here's Dexter now pulling away this little green blob of moisture. That's not the uh, not a big deal. Uh, we've got a little area of spin here off the Carolina coast. That's what I just showed you. South of there, though, another tropical disturbance. This one going to potentially uh, sneak out into the Gulf by this weekend where environmental conditions could also become favorable uh, for development. So you're going to need to watch that region. And then down into the main development region, uh, yeah, we've got this new wave into that uh, part of the intertropical convergence zone that's going to likely break away and uh, potentially get up into an area that would also favored development over the next seven days or so. And if all that wasn't enough, a new wave rolling off of Africa that we're also going to need to discuss. So a lot going on out there and uh, plenty, uh, like I said, to talk about. Let's go ahead and now take a look and uh, we're going to start by looking at that area closest to home and how we could get some homegrown development in the near term. Diving right into model guidance, this is the latest uh, European model run, and you can see by the time we get to this Friday, uh, two areas of spin noted here on the model. One right off the Carolina coastline, pretty close to becoming that uh, E name here with a look like that, and then uh, a new area working into the Gulf at the same time, uh, both working into an environment that is more favorable for development. And you can see that uh, one part of that is going to be the sea surface temperatures out here. We are running well above average temperatures in the Gulf as well as uh, just off the southeast coastline. You can see in those orange colors uh, anywhere from one to even upwards of three degrees Celsius warmer than uh, we normally are this time of year. That's anywhere in that five degree Fahrenheit range higher. That means temperatures in the upper 80s, some places even creeping into or close to the lower 90s. That's explosive levels of uh, surface temperatures here in the Atlantic. So if any storm can take advantage of that, it's going to have a really high ceiling if it can avoid wind shear and dry air. And obviously that's the other part of the equation. What does the wind shear look like out here over the southeast over the coming days? Uh, Well, as we take a look at uh, some of that data, these are the upper level winds. And one thing that uh, is catching my eye here is the direction that the wind is blowing up here. And it's diverging is uh, uh, what's happening. Basically what that means is all these little arrows here, you could see how they're kind of working uh, in uh, different directions and kind of spinning in a way uh, in a cyclonic or an anti-cyclonic, I should say, way or clockwise. We've got an upper level high pressure out here. That's helping to fan out this region of the Atlantic, one off the southeast coastline, uh, but also kind of dipping down into the Gulf a little bit. And that's by this weekend. So that combined with the fact we've got a stalled out frontal boundary in here helping to uh, create surface vorticity or surface spin. Uh, And then obviously I just showed you that sea surface temperatures are above average. That's definitely an environment that would be conducive of potentially something trying to form. 
and we've got enough moisture as well. Now, moisture not off the charts here. It's not a completely perfect, pristine environment, but you can see uh, here we go by Friday. We've got a big plume of moisture off the southeast coast, and then that wave, like I mentioned, moving into the Gulf at the same time. So plenty moist enough uh, if a surface vorticity can kind of win out here for something to get going. And you can see that environment kind of hangs on all the way even into early next week. Obviously, a little bit of dry air in and around. Like I mentioned, not a pristine environment but plenty good enough to uh, try to squeeze a storm out of all of this. Now, what are the odds that we get a storm? Well, if we take a look at some ensemble data here, uh, this is from the latest European, and uh, you'll notice if I can get it uh, to fit here. Uh, yeah, it's definitely picking up on both of those areas. Now, new today on the European ensembles, and these are brand new, uh, is trying to grab that energy off the southeast coastline and bring it offshore, kind of riding up near the outer banks and pulling out to sea. That would be good news. We've already had some flooding recently in the Carolinas from this very wet, cold pattern that we've uh, been fighting over the past couple of days. And then a couple of members also trying to develop that Gulf system. Uh, and I'll be honest, there's really not much else I can tell you right now than that. Something could form. If it does form uh, in the Gulf, it would definitely hit the United States in some way. As for the area off the southeast coastline, if it forms, the latest trend has been to keep it offshore, which would be a good thing, although some model data does still bring it up into North Carolina or even South Carolina. So watching uh, all of this kind of southeast energy over the next seven days as it may try to uh, grab that E name, which again would be Aaron. If it doesn't do it, then let's switch on over to the main development region where, yeah, we also could see development chances over the next two weeks. The Climate Prediction Center now sounding the alarm on likely development, uh, I would say, over the next two weeks, as I mentioned, now through about the middle of the month. And sure enough, they're highlighting the main development region of the Atlantic from the uh, Antilles all the way out towards uh, the Cabo Verde Islands, multiple regions to watch. But this is the part of the Atlantic that climatologically speaking, you want to start watching in that uh, August time frame. And one concerning thing on it that you'll notice here is you don't see uh, these areas kind of recurving out instantly. You see this kind of riding right through that intertropical convergence zone or that belt that you need to be more cautious of this time of year. Uh, so you can definitely see it there from the Climate Prediction Center. Another place you could see it from here is going to be on our satellite loop. Let's take a look at it out here. And like I mentioned, I keep saying intertropical convergence zone. What is that? Well, it's just a big old line basically around the globe that shifts throughout the year of thunderstorm activity. This time of the year, uh, it goes uh, right over the main development region and is one of the key factors in creating Atlantic hurricane season, uh, at least in the North Atlantic. And uh, you can see it's lit up right now. Multiple waves to watch. One area is this wave right here. Now, not overly um, organized right now, but you can definitely see firing up pretty consistent thunderstorm activity. And then back uh, kind of coming off the African coast right now is another region of increasing thunderstorm activity. Both of these will need to be watched. Uh, this first one here, that's what was shown on the map earlier. That's what has that medium chance of development. This next one uh, has not been shown yet, but likely just because it won't develop in the next seven days. Over the coming days, it too likely to get an area of interest from the National Hurricane Center. So you get the idea here. Things are getting active pretty quickly out into the Atlantic. Uh, here's one of the re or here's um, some of the model uh, runs I should uh, say uh, here that uh, are showing why the National Hurricane Center has that area lit up. And uh, we'll give you a sneak peek here with the latest GFS. Uh, like I mentioned, right here, we'll start on Friday. This is that uh, wave closest to the uh, continent of North America here, and then the one behind it still coming off of Africa uh, here by the middle of the week. Now, we'll keep it going ahead into time. The GFS uh, definitely developing that first wave and then kind of bringing it generally on a pathway towards the United States over the next seven days but keeping it weak in that time frame. And then eventually in the seven to 10 day uh, time frame gets towards the Bahamas and starts to develop into something a little bit more significant. And uh, obviously by the time we get 10 days out into La La Land, as I like to say, so plenty far enough away to watch it. What about some other models? Well, the European model from this afternoon, here we go, also on Friday. This is Dexter pulling on out. This is that next little system uh, that the European is trying to form off the Carolina coastline. And that here is that uh, other area of interest in the Atlantic that we're talking about right now. As we go ahead in a time, the uh, G, uh, the European, excuse me, uh, kind of curves it out to sea, but does develop it. Here we go uh, by next Monday. Yeah, curving out to sea, but becoming a named storm. Uh, so it could definitely uh, grab that next name and then kind of dies out there in the Atlantic in the seven to 10 day time frame. So you already immediately see one big difference between the models. The uh, GFS 
uh, bringing it towards the United States, the European curving it out to sea. And uh, I'll show you one more model as well. Here's the Canadian model. What does it show? Uh, honestly, a little bit closer to uh, the GFS here. Gets a pretty weak system in the next week, uh, but after a week, hits a pocket of more favorable environmental conditions to develop and uh, gets this a lot closer to the United States uh, than the European model has. So what's going on here? Why do we have differences in the models? Well, let's switch on over and take a look at the mid-level flow and try to kind of uh, dissect this piece by piece. Well, that intertropical convergence zone, it's a lot like an interstate. You keep on driving straight, but you've got opportunities to take off ramps or an exit. The question is, will any of these storms do so? Now, here's why the models are fighting it out a little bit. The European curving this out to see the GFS not doing it so much. Uh, this is your off ramp, that little area of blue up in the North Atlantic. That's the exit path for this potential storm. Uh, but notice it's pretty far north. Now, this was dipping all the way down here. Uh, towards the islands. Yeah, very easily that this storm would probably curve out to sea, but notice it's trapped all the way up here almost at the same latitudes as New England. So uh, the storm's going to have to kind of really find it. And if it's just a little bit further south, the storm that is, or this off ramps a little bit further north, or maybe this high pressure here is a little bit stronger, uh, then the storm's probably not going to be able to take that off ramp and curve nice and out to sea. The other problem is after that off ramp leaves, I mean, there's not really another one for a while. The Atlantic starts to block pretty heavily here, uh, meaning we get uh, just uh, a lot of strong upper level flow way up into the Arctic. That's where all the off ramps will be. And back down south where that tropical convergence zone is, yeah, it's just a straight highway like the Autobahn from Africa straight to uh, the Caribbean and or Southwest Atlantic. So we're going to need to hope uh, that this off ramp is taken. But after this storm, again, it's going to be tough to find these off ramps. And you can see that here on the ensembles. Uh, we'll show you the latest uh, GFS ensembles and you can kind of decipher a couple of these areas. Here's that potential off the Carolina coastline this weekend. And then here's the current storm. Notice on the GFS kind of doing all sorts of things. A lot of members are taking that off ramp. Uh, so that's good news, but some of them not so much. And then the storm after the fact uh, tries forming here and you get a lot of members that over the next 10 days get something relatively close to land, whether that's the United States or the Caribbean or the islands uh, still to be deciphered. But you could see uh, a bit of a concerning uh, track there on the GFS model and the European model. Uh, a little bit different here. You could definitely see that potential for that East Coast storm developing and pulling on hopefully out to sea has been the trend today. A couple members with that Gulf system that we're also going to watch. Here's the closer storm. Here's the one uh, that currently is being watched by the National Hurricane Center. Just about all European ensemble members take that off ramp. We'll hope for that to be the case and uh, plenty of them developing it into a named storm. And uh, obviously, we all love a good fish storm. So hopefully this one will uh, be nice and pretty on satellite and be out in no man's land. But behind that, that new wave rolling off of Africa, uh, the European is a lot more excited that that one's going to stay much further south and not find an off ramp and potentially get close to the islands by about 10 days from now or so. So that's kind of the tropics right now. A lot going on out there. Like I said, about five different areas. We're watching two potential homegrown systems in the near term. Uh, this system that we are going to hope curves out to sea, but does have a pathway to keep going towards the United States. And then the system after that, which looks a lot less likely to curve out to sea. But the question is, does it even develop? And where does it go as it's uh, still, you know, 10 or so days from getting anywhere close to land? So plenty of time to track these things. And uh, that's exactly what we'll keep doing here on the channel. All right, that's the tropics. Let's bring things on back home and talk about the next seven days across the eastern United States. Current conditions are varying significantly depending on where you're watching from. If you're down in Georgia or the Carolinas or even Virginia, uh, yeah, the rain continuing, even some flooding today in the Charlotte area, uh, ongoing storms just continuing across this region. We've got very cool, wet conditions for uh, much of the foothills and Piedmont of the Carolinas, a little bit stormier down towards the coast, just an unsettled pattern in general. And that's partially why uh, we have this potential for that storm to form off the southeast coast. Outside of that, uh, it's been a pretty nice stretch in the Northeast. A couple storms this afternoon up into upstate New York, but really the bigger story here as well as back into Michigan, Wisconsin, and uh, even into Chicago and Northern Indiana is Canadian wildfire smoke uh, flaring up out this way and uh, definitely bringing some air quality alerts with it. Not really what you want to see, but at least uh, we are seeing nicer weather up here, although starting to warm back up and in a pretty big way. Outside of that, we do have a new complex of storms up into the Northern Plains. 
Uh, folks, it's been the never-ending severe weather season up here. I don't know what it is about this year. It just decided it was never going to stop. And uh, we're going to see even more severe weather later this week up into the Dakotas, Minnesota, uh, Montana, and surrounding regions. Let's look at what's happening out there right now. How's it going to change is the next question you're probably wondering. Uh, well, I think a lot of us are going to start to warm back up. By the time we get later into this week, a big ridge starting to build back over the eastern U.S., probably still remaining near average, maybe slightly uh, below average into Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, but warmer than it is right now for sure, just still unsettled with some rain, cloud cover, and uh, some flow out of the north helping to keep temperatures down at bay. If you're watching from the Midwest, though, the Northern Plains up into the Northeast, that's where the warm-up is really going to begin, even up into Eastern Canada, uh, seeing that big ridge of high pressure that, like I said, sure enough, is going to keep those temperatures warm. You can see it here. Uh, here we go by later this week, still remaining chilly into portions of the east. Uh, this is by Thursday, Friday, but really warming up into the plains, the Rockies, into the Midwest. And by this weekend, that warm air really filtering up into the northeast, eastern Canada, still average to below average down into the uh, southeastern coastline. Uh, and uh, even in just those states in general, I should say, uh, whether you're in the Western Carolinas or the coast still looks below average, uh, but um, warming up elsewhere. And uh, you can see that warm up really becoming a pretty common theme across much of the country over the coming time frame. Let's show you future radar when the next big storm system may arrive and how much rain is on the way with this pattern setting up. Latest model run for tomorrow, we do have a storm system up into the Midwest. Watch for severe weather. If you're in the Dakotas, Minnesota, uh, and into Nebraska and Iowa, that just kind of same old corridor that keeps dealing with it. Another time frame of severe weather potential. Meanwhile, uh, rain and chilly temperatures, at least compared to what it should be this time of year, uh, continuing down into the Carolinas, Virginia, Georgia, Florida. Really tomorrow, a lot like today for many of us. Now, as we go further ahead into time, uh, you're going to notice it's really more of the same. Remains unsettled down into the southeast. Rounds of these systems and these storms uh, up into uh, the northern plains. You can see by, this would be Friday, a new low pressure system into the Dakotas bringing severe weather potential for many and trying to cross even into the Midwest a little bit here uh, by the time we get towards this coming weekend. The Northeast, probably the nicest spot on the map here and even the Southern Plains as well where warming up, sure, uh, but relatively speaking, stays pretty dry through this week. And uh, you can just see that same old pattern continuing for uh, really about the next seven days or so. So what does that mean in terms of rainfall? Well, uh, the southeast going to continue to win between some potential tropical systems, the stalled out frontal boundary. Uh, rain going to be a pretty common sight there into the Carolinas, coastal Georgia, and much of Florida, even back into the Gulf states uh, out uh, towards New Orleans as well. And then higher rain chances up into the Midwest and Northern Plains, where remember those complexes of storms, including severe weather potential is going to be something that we're watching over the next seven days. Alrighty, folks, well, that's all I got for you on this Tuesday. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And uh, with that said, y'all have a great one, and I'll see you all tomorrow.